In today's episode of A Closer Look, we're taking a look at my Sega collection. Sega! Hey, what's going on guys? CJR here, back with another video. Today we are taking a closer look at the Sega collection. Um, if you want to see more of the closer look videos, they're here or here or at the end of this video. Um, last time we did a closer look on the PlayStation collection. Uh, I've done the Nintendo Nook previously. I might redo that video because there's a bunch of new stuff in there. Um, but yeah, you can check out those videos. You guys seem to like this uh, format. So what I'm going to do is pull out my phone and we are going to start right here with the uh, complete Dreamcast collection, which was completed a few years ago um, with the help of viewers like you. So thank you to everybody that helped with that. Um, we're going to pull it out and go through some of my most valuable games, talk a little bit about some of my favorite games. Um, starting off with the most expensive game in the collection, which was a little bit surprising um, because it, it didn't used to be, uh, Cannon Spike. And it also happens to be one of my favorite games on the system as well. Cannon Spike is a almost like a 3D, a 3D uh, beat 'em up shmup. Um, kind of hard to explain. It's very unique. Uh, really, really good game. Uh, features a bunch of uh, characters throughout the Capcom um, IPs: uh, Cammy, Mega Man, uh, Arthur uh, is in there from um, Ghouls and Ghosts, Ghosts and Goblins. Um, really unique game. I actually picked this one up at a swap meet for $60. It was a pretty good deal at the time. I think it was going for around $100, um, but I was able to get it for $60, so I was pretty happy. And now it is $300, almost $400 Canadian, so I don't know, $340 USD, something like that. So yeah, that is absolutely in the top three um, on the console for me. Um, next up is Project Justice. Um, element OP, Project Justice at $385, not far behind. Um, one that I'm surprised to see this high, uh, that has jumped up quite a bit is Illbleed. Uh, now this is a very unique game, um, survival horror type game. I have not played through this before. I've probably put a couple hours into it. Uh, very unique, um, Quite bizarre game, actually. Uh, that guy is now at $380. And then the one that used to be the most expensive is... Giggling 2, which is a Capcom shmup. Great game. And then the rest of the list is rounded out. Uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Uh, Giggling 2 is around $380, so around uh, $300-ish. Uh, US Resident Evil 2 is a game that has um, skyrocketed in price 240 bucks. I actually found that one at a garage sale. Uh, I have a video of it somewhere on my channel $5 um, It was like the first sale of the season first house. We went to we found a Dreamcast in the bottom of this box I dug it out. It was pretty gross um, But there was a couple games and one of them was Resident Evil 2 and at the time I was like oh great I didn't realize even at the time. I think it was a hundred and something dollar game. So uh, that was a really nice find uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, The New Age of Heroes at uh, 225. Yeah, and then Power Stone is there at almost 200 for, sorry, Power Stone 2. Uh, Power Stone, the original, is another favorite on the system. There's really not a whole lot of games on the system that are, aren't at least, that don't at least have some redeemable qualities. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, it's a, it's a great library, 245, 246 games. Uh, you know what game is not listed on here? Um, is uh, Sonic Adventure. Good story behind this one. This is probably my most expensive game. Maybe. I'm not sure what this is going for these days. I think it's hard to track on, on price charting. Um, this is Sonic Adventure Limited Edition. Now, I found this at a swap meet, at a video game swap, um, for $15. That was a nice find. Um, I guess the guy, to be honest with you, when I remember I got home and checked the price on that, and it was listed at price charting as 15 bucks. So the guy probably just priced it at whatever price charting said. Price charting had it wrong. It may still have, its wrong, have it wrong. Um, but yeah, I'll try and put up what exactly this is going for these days. It's hard to get a price on this one. So yeah, that is the um, Sega Dreamcast collection, my pride and joy. Uh, you can see I've, I'm collecting some of the 
um, greatest hits. I've also got some like repro type games of uh, games that didn't come out here. Um, stuff like uh, Res, Res, and uh, I've got a copy of Ikaruga, which are essentially just burn games with labels, just so I can play a copy of it. Um, here is Shenmue. It's time for another Shenmue replay. I did like a series where I played through this on uh, Instagram Stories, I believe it was, a year or two ago. I, I enjoy playing through that once in a while. Another game that's expensive on my list here. Uh, Pure Solar, the Dreamcast version. That's going to come up again later um, on the Genesis. So let's move into Sega CD. That's the next closest one to me. Um, Sega CD, we have 43 games in the collection. Uh, I would say the majority of these were probably not found at garage sales. Um, but purchased through the proceeds of garage sailings. So most expensive game on the Sega CD that I have in my collection is Lunar 2 uh, Elite Blue. A surprising one is up next. Um, when I cataloged my games here and put these in alphabetical order, um, I didn't realize until then that I had this game and that it was this expensive, but uh, ESPN, ESPN Hang Time 95 for some reason is uh, $300. Really surprising. Let me know in the comments below if that's accurate, but that's what price charting is telling me. Um, some other great games here, Vey or Vi. Uh, working designs, titles, RPG. I got these at a local retro shop. I remember I traded in a bunch of my doubles towards this stuff a while back. Robo Alest. Uh, Tengen Shmup. That's a good one. Um, Robo Lest is like $200. Um, Lunar is coming in next. Um, Night Trap. My copy's box is a little beat up, but there is the infamous Night Trap. I love these FMV style games. I, uh, what did I play recently? Uh, this Fahrenheit game I tried recently. And I love playing um, Ground Zero Texas. That's one that I had growing up. Um, NBA Jam, great version on the Sega CD. Sonic CD is a personal favorite. Um, Sonic, that Sonic Boom song, I don't want to sing it. Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, I used to love that. Uh, Prize Fighter, another FMV game. Uh, I re really used to enjoy those FMV games. Uh, here's a game I had as a kid, Brutal Paws of Fury. Kind of a cool art style, decent graphics. Uh, <laughs> Eternal Champions on the Sega CD. Yeah, so that's the Sega CD collection. I wish it was bigger and better. Uh, Mortal Kombat was another one I used to play quite a bit. Yeah, Ground Zero Texas. I remember getting the Sega CD for Christmas one year. I bought it at uh, Canadian Tire, and it came with like a multi-game pack. Uh, I don't know if I still have that. It's like the Sega Genesis. Yeah, this right here. Came with this Sherlock Holmes detective and... Sega Genesis Classics, Streets of Rage, Revenge of Shinobi, Golden Axe, and Columns. On to the Sega Saturn. Now, the Sega Saturn is a collection that I've um, really been paying more attention to lately and enjoying. I've been playing Albert Odyssey, um, fired up my Sega Saturn. I hadn't turned it on for probably a good year, maybe even two. Okay, Saturn collection, I've only got 59 games. So again, a collection that I would love to build. I'm not sure. I'm, I found a few of these at garage sales, but most of them have been purchased through the proceeds of, of garage selling, of course. Albert Odyssey is the most rare and expensive game I have at 360 Canadian, right around three something USD. I'm actually playing through this right now. Uh, it's in my system right now and I'm having a great time with it. I'm still probably about 10 hours away from finishing it off. I just, I need to dedicate some time to doing that. It's, it's been a great. Next up, Shining Wisdom. Again, I did a big trade for uh, some Sega CD and Saturn stuff a few years ago. Uh, traded in a bunch of my doubles. Shining Wisdom, another um, working designs RPG. Look at the, the artwork on there. Uh, even just the font, really well done. The manuals are amazing on these. I love the working designs titles. I'd, I'd love to get more of them. 
Uh, Marvel Superheroes, another one. So uh, um, Shining Wisdom is right around 330. Uh, Marvel Superheroes, 300-ish. Shining, The Holy Ark, Shinobi Legends, uh, Panzer, Panzer Dragoons, Vi. I don't have Panzer Dragoon um, Saga. That's the crazy expensive one. I don't have that. Super expensive to collect for the Saturn, to be honest. And uh, yeah, the Saturn is one console that people seem to worry about disc rot. I do get questions about disc rot. Um, I've never seen disc rot, and I don't know anybody that has. So I'm sure it's a thing. I'm sure it can happen. I've never experienced it myself, and I don't know anybody who has had the issue yet. So uh, we'll see. Um, I don't have a whole bunch of like... I don't have much of an attachment to the Sega Saturn. Or sorry, I don't have much history with the Sega Saturn. So I didn't really play a whole lot of it. But, um, you know, some games that I had played at, at a, as a kid as, at, at, as a kid at a buddy's house. Um, Road Rash. Uh, what else? Panzer Dragoon. Nice in the Dreams. Stuff like that. But the Saturn is a system that I, I really want to get into more. I was really enjoying playing some of the games recently. I'm really looking for an optical drive emulator for the Saturn, to be honest. I really want that. <laughs> I have one for the Dreamcast. It's fantastic. So, yeah, that's that's it for the Saturn. Let's now head over to the uh, Genesis and Master System stuff. All right, so next up, we're going to go through Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. And we have 309 games in the collection. This is one of my favorite things to collect for. I was a Genesis kid growing up. Um, let's see, most valuable and ar arguably the most rare game I have is The Punisher. That was actually found at a garage sale, um, an epic score. I want to say The Punisher was in there, Gary's, which is a great shmup. Um, what else was in there? I, want, I feel like one of the Castlevania, Hyperstone Heist was in there. Castlevania, I forget which Castlevania game was in there. Um, I forget which Castlevania is on the Genesis. Anyways, these are not alphabetical order, so kind of hard to find. Do I have Punisher? I usually put, yeah, here's Punisher right here. Um, gorgeous copy, complete, like near mint condition. Uh, fantastic game. Love this game. Absolutely one of my favorite games on the Genesis. Um, that guy's at 365 Canadian, 320-ish USD. Uh, Pure Solar. Uh, Troubleshooter. There's a game that I never thought would be worth a crazy amount. Here's Troubleshooter right here. A Vic Tokai joint. That's just one that I never thought would go um, get crazy expensive, but it's like 300 bucks now. Uh, Pure Solar on the Genesis, which I have over here. It's actually technically a, is that a, yeah, a Genesis. Yeah, I, I pre-ordered this like, uh, it must have been, I think it was a Kickstarter years ago and it's still sealed. Still got the seal on it, so. Very cool. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, Arrow the Acrobat 2, another game I didn't think would be crazy expensive, but that's over $200. Growl at $200. Gary's just right around $200. Uh, Valis, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Gunstar Heroes is one of my favorites. Um, Haunting, starring Poltergeist, another favorite, uh, kind of a hidden gem on the Genesis. Uh, Hyperstone Heist, fantastic game, right around $100. Um, Streets of Rage series are, are some of my favorites on here. Uh, probably Streets of Rage 2. Dynamite Heady, love that game. Um, the game that I've probably played the most, I've mentioned this before, uh, the game that I've put the most time into in my out, out of all games ever, um, College Football's National Championship. I used to just play it with the kids on my street um, nonstop. We'd play football uh, on the Genesis and College Football's National Championship. Um, very much in like the Joe Montana style. Um, wonderful, perfect. Uh, not perfect, near perfect uh, football game for the time. I still love playing it. I don't know what it is, but that college football's national championship, great game of football, great game of 16-bit football. So tons of fond memories of the uh, Genesis, and that's something that I'd like to uh, uh, zero in a little bit on and, and get a little bit in more in-depth into my experience with the Genesis. Okay, next up, let's do Sega Master System. Uh, Master System is down by my ankles here. I'm not going to get down that low. Uh, Golden Axe Warrior, my most rare and expensive game, $350. That was a garage sale find. Um, I'm sure it was probably $1 or $2. That was a long time ago. Fantasy Star coming in around $200. Outrun 3D. I don't have the 3D goggles at $150 ish. Um, Elf it was another garage sale find for around $100. Um, Moonwalker, I also found it at a garage sale. And that guy is like $70 Canadian. 
Um, underrated console, the Master System. Uh, I, I quite enjoy it. I have a um, EverDrive for it that I like to play uh, the majority of my games on. But uh, yeah, I, I really do enjoy the uh, Master System, and I don't think, at least in North America, it gets its due. I know in the in the UK and Europe, I think it was more prevalent, and of course Brazil. Um, real quick, let's get into uh, Game Gear. Now, I actually was a Game Gear kid. I had a Game Gear growing up. Um, so I have some fond memories of the hip uh, battery pack and just burning through double A's uh, until my parents finally were like, okay, enough of this. We got the battery pack. Uh, I used to play with it plugged into the wall a lot too. Um, but loved the, uh, the Game Gear at the time. Uh, the Game Gear collection. Let's see. Game Gear, I have 103 games. I've actually been... Uh, when I go to uh, retro video game swaps, I actually seek them out because you can get them for pretty cheap. At least when I used to do it. Uh, most expensive games, Tales Adventure uh, at $75. Shining Force right around $50. Uh, Vampire Master of Darkness, $40. Bucks. Sonic Blast after that at $40. Uh, Earthworm Jim and Battletoads right around $40 as well. Uh, Rystar, Ristar is one of my favorites. And uh, Streets of Rage 2 is fantastic on the system. Uh, what else did I used to play? I used to play a lot of the Disney games as a kid. Uh, Outrun Europa is a fun one. Tailspin's great. There's some good little games on the, on the uh, Game Gear. Again, it doesn't quite get its due. And taking a look at some of the consoles. These two Game Gears were found at a garage sale uh, within five houses of each other. Two box game gears, I couldn't believe it. Never seen a box game gear in my life. Found two on the same street, like four houses down from each other. It was pretty wild pickup. That 32X is box and complete. I don't know if I've ever even tried it, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, box Genesis, I've got a Genesis Model 3 back there. This could use some reorganizing. Uh, there's my game gear collection. Uh, I've got the game gear case, bunch of games in there as well. Um, Sega CD Model 1, Sega CD Model 2, uh, the battery pack for the Game Gear. Here's my uh, Game Gear EverDrive, comes in handy. Sega Genesis Model 2, blaster for the uh, uh, Dreamcast. That Master System, I remember working at the hospital and that popped up on uh, Kijiji, Canadian Craigslist. And I left like on a break and I flew to the person's house. 60 bucks, box and complete, uh, with like four or five games. Great deal back then, definitely a great deal now. The Menacer, um, in my opinion, mostly a piece of crap. The Dreamcast keyboard, that's a lot of fun with uh, the typing of the dead. Yeah, so that's, that is a, a look at my Sega collection. How could I have forgot the Sega Pico? I always joke that this is the first thing that'll be leaving my collection if I run into room. But uh, yeah, there's the Pico, boxed and complete with a couple games. There you go, Pico fans. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this closer look at my Sega collection. Stay tuned for more of these videos coming soon. Let me know in the comments below which collection you'd like me to highlight next. And I think I'm gonna do a series of videos where I look a little bit more in depth into each individual collection and uh, talk about some of my favorite games and um, some hidden gems, stuff like that. So once again, thank you so much for your continued support. Feel free to uh, hit that like button and uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys. Till the next episode.